Hello, everyone. So we are doing another episode of user onboarding teardowns. And today, we're going to switch it up a little bit. So instead of Azar and me going through this, we have Azar. And we are going to go through this whole part of convert.com and really just try and pull out like what are those things that they could have done better? What are some of those areas that they really nailed in their onboarding? And we're going to have a lot of fun. So the first part that we always try and do whenever we start these off is what is the perceived value? Like what is this company promising to us? And so we can see from here, I mean, they're, they're trying to help us optimize their website for customer value, but I'm still really clueless as to, to how you're going to help me do that. And so I think from the, the above the fold, unless I read like the, the small copy at the top, um, I don't really get a good feel for for what this product is before I'm ready to sign up. Now, Ezen, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, same here. Um, well, they did a good job with their, you know, the first thing you see, optimizing your website. So, you know, it's about optimizing, probably A-B testing, um, probably getting more people to become, you know, leads, uh, visitors to leads. So, yeah, and I like, uh, I feel like I like the design a little bit. Um, looks very very professional um, and I love their the their CTA uh, the 15 day uh, free trial um, very prominent and I think it, it 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 drives it drives action yeah definitely I think like in terms of the colors I really they did a good job on making that part stand out um, I just think in terms of the, the overall coffee and what that really promises us um, that part could be promised or at least tightened up a little bit is the way I kind of look at it from a standpoint of like what you promised is we want to really make sure that the people understand the perceived value before we take them into the product. Because if we do, let's say a, a poor job of explaining the perceived value of our product, uh, it's going to be really interesting for people to actually experience that value because we're, we haven't done a clear enough job of promising what that better promise end looks like. And so if we really want to build a world-class onboarding experience, we really have to get good at not just understanding like what our perceived value is and communicating that to our audience, but we have to get insanely good at delivering on that as soon as possible. So um, without wasting too much more time, we're just going to sign up here. And so once I click the sign up button, I get a nice little pop up. And as I'm going through this, the thing I, I like is there's a lot of social proof. And it's saying, okay, 5,000 sites and counting. So they're using a couple different types of social proof, which is always great to have that variety. And this copy here, like, will you join the likes of Sony and Jabra, sign up for full access? I feel like it's not that motivating. Like we have the, all these, like this whole left side is dedicated yeah. to social proof. But then up here, it's like, well, Okay, um, question here. I wouldn't recommend actually having a question on a sign-up form because it's like we we're not trying to really convince people. We, we have convinced them by the point they got here and we just want to make it really easy and not kind of question them about why they should be doing this. So um, that's my, my one takeaway is just kind of get rid of that question and make sure people just have these three fields. But like with the information they're asking is straightforward. There's, there's not a ton of fields here. And I think this part is, as far as signing up, it's pretty straightforward. What are your thoughts, Hazem? Yeah, and I like the fact that the sign up just pops up uh, a modal, um, just much, much faster access, no wait for a page uh, reload or refresh, um, just makes it easier. And as, as you mentioned, the social proof, um, I would actually try to reiterate value here a little bit more because yeah. it was not, very clear in the beginning um so yeah but i i like i like the fast process so they're not asking for much and i think probably they will ask um maybe for more information let's see yeah no it's it's pretty stripped down which i always like but i agree with you in terms of like the social proof it's here but let's convince people around like what are they able to do what are those main benefits with the a b testing solution so Whenever I did click uh, submitting this form, there's a nice little ghost form here, <laughs> which pops up. Oh. And so, yes, I want to be updated, of course. And I'm just going <laughs> to click continue to see the next part of it. 
So it validated my email and then boom, this is uh, quite a lot more details. And so I really hate these empty forms <laughs> to be honest. That's my personal opinion. Um, so I, I know why they're asking like industry, uh, company size, let's actually go big, see if that changes the follow-up, uh, company role, researching analytics. So the thing I always ask myself whenever I, I go through all this stuff is, is this just being used to qualify me or is this actually going to help you help me? And so when Azar and I have gone through other products, like for instance, Notion, and we selected like, hey, I'm agency or marketing, they actually pull that information into the product whenever we, we got to the dashboard. And all the kind of templates we saw were specific to that. So whenever it comes to steps, there is no harm in having extra steps in some cases, but let's actually use that information to help the user and not just help ourselves with all this data so we can help qualify people. So that's my two cents. Uh, but it, it does feel like quite a lot of information and even like the phone number, this is um, required. So, like so I, I, always do. I think the fact that they're asking for a phone number yeah. answers your first question. They're trying to qualify you, you know, and they're trying to, probably this is for sales more than the in-app product experience. Yeah. And I feel like the first page or the first few of forms were all for marketing. This one's all for sales. <laughs> <laughs> and so filled in some uh, information here. Hopefully we can get this uh, format right. Or maybe I'll pick one that's closer. Let's see. It's the one thing, I don't know about you, but whenever I'm going through these forms, I just find it so painful. Like I wish I could just type in like C or something to get to Canada, but it like <laughs> yeah. skips over it. And so I'm just like, okay, let's, let's get something here so I can go for <laughs> You see how, how much friction that little step added to your experience? Yeah, like, can you <laughs> see Canada? Like I can't see Canada on this thing at all. Just, just put the United States, put my number. <laughs> okay, there's Canada. So what I always do, you know, just fill in your number and then change the last digit. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, that's very smart. <laughs> All right, let's see. Okay, looks like we filled in all the mandatory stuff. Okay, so success. Uh, it doesn't feel that successful. You'll be redirected <laughs> to your application account in a few seconds if that and does then, not happen. And it's not happen. Oh, well, there you go. It's, it's loading, but that did take a while. <clears throat> Okay, so well, let, let's give them a positive. They did not ask you to confirm your email. So yes. at least that's one positive. And I'll give them another positive. So this here is a really effective use of your dashboard. So I call this an empty state. And why it's really effective is because in a lot of SaaS companies, whenever you sign up and you go to that dashboard, it's, it's usually just empty. There's nothing for you to do. It's useless data until you do integration or set up your software solution. But in this case, what they're really doing is um, kind of building a, a straight line towards like what it does it take for you to see a quick win in the product. And if I need to create a new project, that's exactly the first step I need to do to get closer to seeing value from the product. So and I would, I would definitely yeah. also use that zero state to reiterate a little bit more value on that part of the app. Like, why do I need, like, what are you going to get out of creating a project? Mm -hmm. Because right now it feels a little bit, you know, like you don't understand why you need to create a project. A lot of yeah. the time you're, you know, and, and you say a lot that onboarding starts from the landing pages or the websites. Yeah. Um, but if you're here and you know, they've done a bad job, let's say re reiterating that value, you're here and you don't know why you just ended up in the product. That's why it's very important to reiterate the value again um, right here. But yeah, there's the, the empty states. Um, that, that's a good use of the empty states. I would just add a little bit more information. Like, yeah. But, what is the value I'm getting out of this? Definitely. I feel like that has been missing throughout the whole experience so far. Uh, so I'm just going to add a nice little uh, test here, test.com. And so this stuff looks, I mean, 
it's nice that it's all checked in so I don't have to think about it too much because I was just about to click start project. And so when I, I create that first project, I can go in and, well, it's gonna take a little while to load here, but it also kind of takes me to the next part of like, okay, what is a new experience? But I go back to your first point and just say like, well, I think there's, there's a big education gap here. And so what I think could actually be, um, I don't know, benefited from in this whole experience is just training me like a little bit more about what are experiences because it's not clear. I, I don't really know what experiences are in this context. And so if there was maybe like a, a hot tip or something that's been said like, hey, this is what experiences are for, I, I would more likely or, or be more inclined to actually click it and go through that whole experience. But um, right now it's like, okay, now I click on it. Maybe if this was like bubbles or something like that, where I could actually see this option first, because I would have got it uh, without having to kind of hover over that and click it. What are your thoughts on this one? I would just, whenever the user is um, navigating around the app, especially in the first run, I would make sure that each you know part of the app, so now you're in like projects, you create a project, you're in some part of the app. I would start with a model that would just, show me what is the value I'm going to get out of my experience on that page or that, you know, feature. So obviously here you can create experiences, A, B testing, split URL, um, my multi-page, there's multiple things you can do here. Mm -hmm. I would have loved to see what all these meant and how they can help me. This can easily be done with like a, like a, a couple of models. Yeah. Be the first product model. or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, because like right now it feels like this is this is very hard for this to be like completely self serve, right? Yeah. Probably you need somebody like on a demo or maybe like a webinar to walk you through the, all all that stuff. Yeah, um, and like they they did have that modal at the beginning where we were asking all that information, and I think if it was even structured like that, like the first step for me was just like, okay, what's your first project name? What's that experience? What kind of experience do you want to build? Is it A-B test, split test, multivariate? And like just walk you through those specific steps um, could actually increase that uh, person's chance of setting up that first project right. successfully. Because right now it feels kind of disconnected. Like even if there was a checklist or something, this, this would feel a little bit more structured. But it feels like each one of these little things is just um, like, I don't know. It's, it's out of place. It feels all disconnected. Um, so that's the, maybe just the whole user experience of the product. Um, yeah. That's a whole bigger issue. But right yeah. now there is that big education gap in the beginning, uh, which when you think about it from an onboarding perspective, that's a value gap. Whenever there's that disconnect between, okay, like they, they promised us the, the better life of increasing the customer value on our website. And we can do that in the product. I, I totally believe convert.com can help me get to that point in my life where I can increase the customer value um, on my website. But there's a big gap here in terms of how long it takes me to get there. How easy is it to experience that value? And so um, the biggest problem that convert.com has is that value gap and that time to value right now, it, it would actually take me quite a while to get to that point. So I think to really summarize it, if we go back to even just the, the homepage, um, the value prop wasn't clear. And so what that really impacted whenever I, I signed up is that I wasn't as motivated about it because I, I didn't quite understand, okay, what is the full value? What is the full capability of this? Is it just A-B testing? Is it uh, just multivariate testing? And so I think if they had focused more on the, the perceived value and really nailing that, um, then they could do a better job of delivering on it and maybe kind of tying in the, the experiences within that experience, like maybe having a modal where as I'm going through that initial onboarding experience, they're asking me like, what is the specific kind of test you want to do? And then it just like, if I click AB test, it expedites me to that part of the product that I care most about. And then I can start creating that test very soon and experience the value of the product. But I'd love to hear your thoughts. What are your kind of final they, takeaways? They, my, my biggest thought out of this whole experience is that they didn't go for the quick win. Um, I know, you know, in terms of the perceived value on the website, yeah, that wasn't that wasn't clear. But for me, 
even when I go inside and even if I know what is the perceived value and I want to get to it, there was no quick way to go get that um, quick win in my, in my opinion. Um, yeah. I would agree with you. So what I would do is that if I can use the information collected in the beginning and I would somehow tie it to a welcome message when they first get, and kind of like try to give them. So this is definitely, it looks like this is not a linear onboarding, right? It's mm -hmm. probably like choose your own adventure or where you can give them more than one uh, uh, choice to, uh, to start. And I would yep. have just went for the quick win. Like, let's show you, you know, I wanna, I'm here to create an AB test for my website. Let's go and take them through the process. Let them just get that feel for a mm -hmm. very quick win. And that did not happen. I felt like they, you know, like, what does it mean for me to go to the goals tab and add a goal? I don't yeah. know what that means. Um, the audience is, it, it's just leaving you on your own. Um, and, you know, that's, I, I, I feel like, well, there is a deeper problem of the whole you, user experience of the app, right? Yeah. But I feel like it can, like, you can adjust the onboarding in a way, even with, UI patterns, simple UI patterns like tooltips or models that yeah. can actually um, impact activation a lot. Um, but yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And so I think in terms of just the, the overall quick wins, we covered most of the ones. Also, we both agreed on at least the, the forms. That was quite a bit, even like that phone number step, that's um, quite a big ask for some people. So maybe even having that as optional for some people because it did kind of take a lot of time to even find my country. And maybe in that whole experience, there's an easier way to do that. But yeah, I think you're right. In terms of the quick wins, we can reduce some of the form fields, get better on clarifying that value. And then whenever it comes to the overall quick win, really just get specific about like what are those specific first things people can do in the product and let's expedite that process. So thank you everyone for listening. I hope you found this super valuable. And if you want to subscribe to more of these user onboarding teardowns, make sure to click the button below to subscribe and we hope you enjoy this. Thank you.